Hi, my name is Alex Dietmarov. I'm an orthodontist from Moscow, Russia, and this is Orthodontic Grammar. Today I decided to answer a simple yet important question. When should we take a CBCT scan for the orthodontic patient? No doubt 3D imaging has improved our diagnostic abilities immensely, but the dose of a CBCT scan is still much greater than of cephalometric and panoramic X-rays combined. That is why we have clearly understand when CBCT is really necessary and when we are just dealing with unsubstantial marketing claims. Let's look at the research data. First, I want to look at a study in which 24 orthodontists were asked to evaluate six patients' cases with classic diagnostic records and then CBCT records were added to the whole picture. Indeed, after looking at 3D images, some of the treatment plans had been changed. However, only in these particular situations. Discovery of unexpected aspects of the location of unerupted teeth, severe root resorption related to contact of the crown of an unerupted tooth with an erupted tooth, severe skeletal discrepancies. This was a small and simple study from 2013. However, more recent and comprehensive studies, such as this systematic review, only reinforce its findings. Now let's look at a very popular claim that CBCT helps to diagnose breathing problems. The issue with such statement is the fact that the airway is not static. It constantly changes during the breathing cycle and a single radiographic image depicts just a single stage of this process. Here is a relevant study. In their research, the authors included 27 CBCT scans of non-growing patients taken with 4-6 to six months intervals. All measurements were done by one trained operator. The authors concluded, different CBCT exams with equal scanning and patient positioning protocols can result in different 3D pharyngeal airway space readings. In other words, every time you take a CBCT scan, the airway volume measurements would be different. As I said before, the most critical issue about CBCT is its radiation dose. However, some adepts of routine CBCT examinations claim that there is also an option to take low-dose CBCT, which radiation-wise would be comparable to panoramic radiographs. After a PubMed search, I found a paper where the authors indeed claim one particular model of CBCT machine is capable to produce extremely low doses. The issue with this study is that the authors were paid a honorarium by the manufacturer, the exact sum is not disclosed. Moreover, despite the potential positive bias, the author's conclusion was still not very persuasive. Quick scan plus effective doses are comparable to conventional panoramic examinations. Significant dose reductions are accompanied by significant reductions in image quality. However, this trade-off may be acceptable for certain diagnostic tasks, such as interim assessment of treatment results. In other words, we probably could limit the dose using a new expensive equipment. However, there is no guarantee that we will be happy with the images produced. Overall, there is no data in the literature to support the indiscriminate use of CBCT in orthodontic diagnostics. They certainly know that CBCT is a great tool for visualization, however, we also have to consider the potential harm of its radiation. Given the current research data and my clinical experience, here are the situations I usually take a CBCT scan. Impacted and supernumerary teeth, root resorption evaluation, placement of tabs, visualization of TMG structures if problems suspected, mid palatal suture maturation assessment, surgical cases. There is no doubt that in the future we'll have new CBCT machines with proven low radiation doses. However, until then, we don't have to put our interests above the patient's safety. This is all for today. My name is Alex Dietmarov. This is Orthodontic Grammar. As usual, I wish you good reads and stable results. Please subscribe, share, leave me a comment, and I see you in the next video.